Hi everyone and welcome to our UARC Live about the move-in process for 2022. Yay! We're going to talk a little bit today about what you can expect about your move-in day and just some tips and tricks for making that as successful as possible. So to start we're just going to talk a little bit about what you need to know when you're arriving to campus. Um, so also caveat, this is for those who are moving into our traditional halls and apartments here on campus. If you are living off campus in one of the four apartment complexes, we actually did a live last Thursday specifically for you. So check that out on our YouTube channel um, and you don't have to hang out with us today. <laughs> so um, for those of you who are moving in in our more traditional move-in oh. process. Oh, yeah, we'll get in here in a minute. That, that flag when we're ready sure. for it. Um, and did you, really, did you introduce yourself? I didn't. I okay, didn't, yeah. I didn't. Thanks for sure. No, of course. Let's get um, you. Sorry, everyone. I am Megan Witherspoon Evans. I serve as the Associate Director for Residence Education in the Housing Department. Um, and then I'm all our leadership team for the entire move-in process across campus. So that is why I am talking to you today. Yay. Uh, so um, we do want you to start out by checking out the move-in website. That's movein.uark.edu. That is going to give you so much information about arriving to campus and more specifically, the maps you need to look at to know how to get to campus. Um, for that, it's really important that you look at that and know which way to come because it's not gonna be your typical Google map or Waze or whatever your preferred map <laughs> to get here. So if you're coming from another place and you do need help getting to Fayetteville, definitely use that. And then once you realize you're getting close to Fayetteville, switch on over to our map and look at the direct route that we give you. What that's gonna do is really take you in the most efficient way possible. We have created these routes specifically so that we don't have any parts of campus that are overwhelmed with car traffic. Um, so if you're used to coming for say a football game or you went to school here and you're driving your student here and you're like, I know Fayetteville, I know campus. Sure, exactly how we yes, that is the way to go, definitely. Yes. Um, so not like every other day, we do have some roads that look a little bit different. We have a few places where you say can't turn left, um, so you don't want to get stuck in a traffic pattern uh, and have to turn around to get in the right place. Um, so some things that are examples of that, let's say you're moving into Maple South. If you're moving into Maple South on Wednesday or Thursday, you're going to end up in a totally different lot than if you're moving in on Friday Maple South is in that direction Saturday. right there. Yeah. So it is important that you look at which map and what day so that you don't end up in the wrong lot on the wrong day. Um, and then also, for example, we are currently in the lot by Reed Hall and there is another move-in lot just on the other side of Maple Hill in front of Hots Hall. But how you get to Reed Hall's lot, if you're in Reed or Maple West, you would come in Garland Avenue. So you wanna make sure you're exiting the interstate to come up Garland Avenue. But if you're moving into Hots, Maple East, and then Maple South, depending on the day, you're gonna need to come in Razorback Road, even though it's right next door, the traffic's just gonna take you a different way. So check out those maps. Um, you can also download the UARC mobile app, and there's gonna be information there on move in, but also general housing things, and a lot of other things you may need to know for your experience when you get to campus. Parking, for example. The weather, it's got the weather. Ooh. <laughs> so many important things you need to know for move-in. So, um, when you do get to campus and you get to your lot, you will notice there's signage all over campus. And you're going to have an arrival pass that is mailed to you um, that is going to look something like this. Uh, though yours is most likely a different color because it is coded for the parking lot you're going to. So you will notice that the signage around campus is color coded to guide you in. Um, so for example, Reed and Maple West are pink. So their arrival passes are pink. The signs are pink. I think we have one back there. Flags yes. That you will see. Ta-da. Reed at Maple Hill West. Mm -hmm. um, it is not only pink, but it also has a shape on it. Um, so that is going to direct you as you are driving around. Be sure to look for the color and shape and abbreviation for your building. Um, and that'll get you to the right place um, and to the right parking lot. Once you get into the parking lot, um, it is really important that you are also paying attention to your arrival time, which will be printed, pre-printed on your arrival pass. 
Um, that's going to get you here. And again, make sure that our lots are not getting too overwhelmed at any point in time. So please come and do your best to arrive at that arrival time. We know flat tires and traffic and things like that happen. So if you're late, we totally understand, um, but just ask you to do your best to get here at that time. Yeah. When you get to the lot, um, you're going to follow the instructions of the staff that are there to greet you. So at every lot, we're going to have multiple people around with staff t-shirts, um, and you'll probably see a lot of people in orange vests running around. Um, they are gonna be there to guide you in every step of the process. So they'll give you instructions as soon as you get into the lot on where to park, how to unload and what your next step is. For the majority of you, when you get parked in your spot, uh, you are going to send the student to get their keys. So they need their student ID, okay. um, which they can also pick up. The ID office will be open on all of our move-in days. So if you need to stop by the union and grab your ID card before coming to the lot, plan ahead for that. Um, so you'll bring your student ID to the tent um, or the front desk, whichever one is appropriate for your location. And you're going to give your ID over, the student can give their ID over, um, and that is going to get your keys. So you'll pick up your keys there and be able to unlock your room. At that point, while the student is doing that, the parent can go ahead and start unloading and taking things up. The buildings will be unlocked, so you'll be able to start moving your items in, even if your student is still at the key tent. Yeah, let me, we, let me recognize we got a question. We wanna be sure to answer that. We were asked, when can students with garage permits begin parking in the garage? Great question. So that for both the garage spots and the resident reserved, we're going to go ahead and be using those spots during move-in. So if you could wait until Saturday to be in those spaces, we recommend all students park in a green lot that does not restrict overnight parking. So make sure you pay attention to those green signs. If it says no overnight parking, don't park there. 56, lot 56, lot 56 is a good one for that great one. on the south end of campus. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the parking map on parking.uark.edu and it's going to give you all the specifics you need to know about where those parking lots are. And then also um, on the back of your arrival pass, you're also going to see these QR codes. You can just open the camera app on your phone and click these and it's going to tell you if you're a student or a parent exactly where you need to go to park uh, for your designated parking lot. So that's another great um, tip for after you're done unloading. Great question. Yeah. And be sure to ask any questions you have. We're here to answer them. And Megan is here, here for that, here for that. All right, so thinking about, um, we've just gotten our keys, we're unloading. Um, those of you who are giving over your IDs, that question always comes up, what do I get my ID back when you get to your room? There's actually going to be an inventory you need to do online through the housing portal. You'll do an inventory for your room best to do it when the room is still empty so you can look and see if there are any damages or broken things in the room. Make sure you note that on your inventory um, to avoid any charges at the end of the year. You can also take pictures if you need to take pictures of um, anything that's damaged or scratched, um, things like that. So. Sure. Let's move a little out of the wind. I got a comment about that. And also a follow-up question about the uh, parking garage. And uh, that was, what time Saturday? I think we have to move out this way. What time Saturday do you know when they'll be allowed to use it? I would recommend our last arrival times on Saturday are going to be in the three to four o'clock hour. So I would recommend um, not going over and trying to get in there until after 4.30. Right. Okay. Yeah, sure. And, uh, um, okay. Uh, a guy named, okay. Asked, um, how, uh, does this apply to the people in the apartments? It does not. So we have a different presentation that was done on Thursday that talks about arrival. If you're going to be at the apartments. Great question. Yes. You can check that out on YouTube on the housing YouTube channel. Yeah. And, and gl good. I'm glad to hear the sound is better. Thank you very much for letting us know. All right, so um, moving back to the inventory as you're completing that inventory, once you have completed that and submitted it, you'll just go back down to the front desk of your building and they will have your ID there where you can pick it back up. So before you have your next meal or before you need to go somewhere and use your ID, um, just be sure and get that back. 
As you're moving in, um, you may have some heavy or bulky items. We will have a few volunteers that are available each day to help with really bulky things, but we do recommend if you have a cart or a dolly or maybe one of those great collapsible wagons. Those are my favorite tool for yeah. moving a lot of things around. Those are nice. Um, if you have any of those that you can bring with you in your car, we will have some dollies and carts available for checkout. Uh, here in our halls, but we don't have a ton. So we'll have a few, you may have to wait for one of those. So we do recommend if you have one at home or you have the ability to possibly rent one of those before you come or borrow from um, another friend or family, uh, that will really help you in your move in process. Our elevators, most of our buildings have elevators, not all of them, so check the move-in website um, or the regular housing.uark.edu website to see if your building has elevators. If there are elevators, know that those the capacity of those elevators is fairly small on move-in because of the things that are coming onto the elevator with the people. So it is sometimes restricted, depending on the building, to the people who have things on wheels. If you don't have something on wheels, you may be asked to climb those stairs um, here in the beautiful Reed Hall. Reed uh, Hall! You can tell how, how tall it is, it nine is. stories. Very high. Uh, so if you have a box and it doesn't have wheels, you may be asked to go up even if you're on the ninth floor. So make sure you are ready uh, to do some stair climbing if you are on one of those upper floors. Some other reminders about the parking lot, we do not allow U-Haul box trucks or trailers into the, the parking lots. So that is something as you're planning and bringing, um, we do allow two cars per student um, in the lot at a time. So if you are um, able to do that, or if you do have something slightly bulkier, um, or let's say there are siblings coming and you have two people's worth of things coming, um, you can get one of the like U-Haul, style vans that fit in a traditional parking space, um, just not one of the larger box trucks or a trailer. If you do have a box truck or trailer, we are going to direct you to park down at lot 56 down by Razorback um, and MLK, and then you would have to shuttle those items back Ooh, to the lot. Nobody uh, wants to do that in this hot weather. It is a long and hot process, so uh, we just recommend from the start, do not plan to bring a trailer or a box truck. We got a motorcycle. A little, little broom broom over there. Um, okay, um, some other tips and things to think about. Um, we also do not allow pets inside our halls. Even if you're just coming for move-in day, um, highly recommend that you leave your furry friends at home um, because our staff will um, talk with you about that if there is an animal coming into the buildings. Um, now, that does not include service animals. If you have a service animal, um, they are allowed to come in, but uh, our pets are not. So it's also, quite frankly, miserable for them right now because it's so hot. So um, <laughs> say goodbye before you leave home um, and leave our, our furry friends there at home to enjoy your air conditioning. Uh, we do not allow you to remove furniture from your room. So all the furniture that is provided by University Housing needs to stay in your room. We do not have an excess place to store. So if you let's say you decided you wanted to bring your own desk chair or you wanted to bring your own mattress, um, you will not be able to set them out in the hallway or take them out of the premises. All furniture has to stay there within the room. Now, you can store them in the back of your closet or under the bed or behind the bed vertically. There are lots of options within the room. You can get creative. The RAs will be hanging around. They're great at being creative on how to store things in the room. So if you have a piece of furniture um, that you don't necessarily want displayed, um, talk with them and they might have a great creative solution for how you can keep that in your room um, and bring in your own item. We had another question come in. It's about parents parking in certain levels of Harmon Garage. And um, will parents, uh, should they park in metered spaces or on certain levels? And then what time do parents need to be out of the garage? And I think I've got some of this answer, but you may know the answers too. So Harmon 4, 5, and 6 are the levels that you'll park on. Um, for that, it's just no overnight parking. So um, I would say you're probably pretty safe um, in the waking hours, um, but then just no overnight parking so that that space is clear for our parents the next day. Right. Very good. All righty. Uh, moving on to the next thing, we will have designated cardboard recycling areas here um, at every hall. You'll see kind of off in the distance, yeah, you there's can see a, cardboard. a little fence 
Um, there'll be Cardboard little fences only. out. Yes. Um, we do ask that if you are going to use our recycling that you do break down your boxes before coming down um, and bringing those boxes down. Um, that just saves our staff time as they're collecting those. They do have to come around and collect that cardboard every day to be taken to our recycling center. Um, so if you can break those down for us, it would really help out a lot. All right, and then some quick tips for your own safety. Um, be sure that you are drinking water. Um, I don't know if you can see the sweat on our brows um, <laughs> from the Instagram video, um, but it is hot out here, y'all, and it is going to be hot for move-in day. Um, so please make sure that you are hydrating. Um, back to my student athlete days, they always told us, be sure to start drinking the day before you need to be hydrated. So um, work in that, um, all those cups of water prior to your actual move-in day and then continue to hydrate throughout the day. We will have some water here available um, on site, but I would highly recommend if you have a reusable water bottle um, to just go ahead and throw those in the car uh, as you're coming and that will really help you out during, during the day. And we do have refill stations in mm -hmm. every hall, so you can easily get your water refilled. Yes, excellent point. And then, um, also when you're thinking about coming for the day, uh, we talked to you about this during orientation, but we just want to reiterate that you are really thinking about your clothing choice and more importantly, your shoe choice, uh, as you're coming prepared for your move in day, we do recommend closed toed shoes. Uh, there is a lot of foot traffic and just a lot of belongings being carried. Um, and you know, no one likes to lose a toe on move in day. So, no. um, <laughs> be prepared for that. Um, and then also some sunscreen or a hat mm -hmm. might be nice, um, just to help you out. What kind, right. of hat, what kind of hat do you like to wear? Do I you wear? Do, you do a bucket hat? See, like, what do you do? I'm not a hat person. You're not a hat see person. see how short my hair is. When okay. I have a hat on, my head just disappears. So I got I'm you. personally not a hat person, um, but... But there's lots of good hats out there. Lots of good hats out yes. there. Um, some of our volunteers will be wearing um, wonderful mm -hmm. uh, baseball caps. True. So you can True. look out for them um, throughout the week. That is a classic hat. <laughs> yes. Um, or a dad hat, as um, <laughs> the students are currently calling them. Yes. Um, okay, so let's talk about leaving the lot. Um, we did uh, talk briefly about the arrival pass. I just want to show that again in case we've had anybody join us. On the back of the arrival pass that you're mailed, there are some QR codes that are specific to your lot that are going to share where you need to park when you leave. Uh, we will also have staff in the lot and at the exits of the lot who have the exact lot numbers um, and places like floors in the garage, things like that, to help remind you on that day. So if you don't commit it to memory, don't worry. There will be plenty of opportunities um, for our staff to share that with you um, and remind you of where you need to go. Um, when you leave, uh, one of the things we're going to tell you when you arrive, it always throws people off just a little. When you get here and you park, we're going to tell you in most of the most of the lots. There are a couple where you're going to unload directly on the curb and move your car immediately. Most of the lots though, you're going to park in a designated spot and we're going to give you about 30 minutes to start unloading and get things out of your, not start, finish. 30 <laughs> minutes to get everything out and finish. Um, and so as you're thinking about the items that you're bringing um, in those cars for move-in day, is thinking about those, getting all of that out in 30 minutes. And all we're asking you to do within that 30 minutes is move the car out of the lot. So mm -hmm. if that is just getting the items from the car to the room, hold off on making the bed, right. decorating the wall, all those good things, just get that out. I know um, in the past parents have been like, I'm not ready to say goodbye yet. And don't worry, we're not ready for you to say goodbye <laughs> yet. Um, we just need that space for the next arrival time of people who are coming in. Some of these lots are fairly small. Um, and so we do have that down to a mathematical science of how many people can fit in the lot at a time. Um, so we just ask that you relocate your cars as soon as they're empty. So if you have a car and it's empty in 15 minutes, if you could go ahead and just move that car, even if you have another car coming um, that's not finished quite yet. The great thing is we do have a shuttle service that is running on move-in days. We have golf carts that are going to be going around. Um, there are going to be signs posted as well as information on movein.uart.edu of how to call a shuttle and they will carry you from a building to a parking garage or to a parking lot and back and forth um, as many times as you need throughout the day. That is a free service we are offering um, and so you can just move that car, grab the shuttle, hop the shuttle back over to your building and continue to unload and say goodbye on your own time. Um, however much time you need to do that that day. Um, be great. 
Got a great question for you from Klaus Cloud. Klaus Cloud. Um, has two twins moving in the same hall, same room. Uh, their move-in times are staggered. Do we have to move the same cars for 15 minutes and come back? So, so you're you're saying your arrival times are back to back? I think so. If that if you're back to back, here's what I would recommend. Um, you should have two different arrival passes mm -hmm. that have let's say your times are nine and nine thirty. So you're you're gonna have your nine o'clock arrival passes. I would bring your your cars, put your nine o'clock arrival passes in. We're gonna verify that as you come in the lot, and then when you're ready for your second go go around, mm -hmm. um, then you could take your nine o'clock arrival pass down and put your 930 arrival pass up. Um, that's a very unique situation, <laughs> um, but uh, that would be a we great like way that, to use yeah. your, your staggered times for that. For sure, for sure. Great question. Um, let's talk about and those of you who joined since we said this, um, if you do have a resident reserved pass for your car, uh, we utilize almost all the resident reserve lots that are adjacent to the halls for move-in. So every night we chain them, lock them, barricade them down so that they are fresh and empty for the crew to come back in eight o'clock the next morning. Um, so with that, if you have resident reserve, you will not be parking in your resident reserve lot until move-in is over. So this Saturday, the 13th, is our last day of assisted move-in within the parking lots. Um, so once we close the lot down at the end of the day Saturday, um, say like 4, 4.30, um, when we finish that whole process, then you would be allowed to relocate your car into the resident reserve lots. And we got a question also about the Harmon parking uh, permit with students. And again, that would be right after Saturday, after we're our last move in on Saturdays when students can use their Harmon parking permit. Yes. Okay. Um, and then if you are bringing a scooter to campus, um, there is designated scooter parking. Again, you can see the map on parking.uark.edu of where you can park scooters. But again, if the scooter parking you're looking for is in one of our closed designated lots that will not be available during move-in, you'll need to put your scooter in a different scooter parking lot and then relocate it here once these lots are fully reopened. Gotcha. Also, don't forget to get your scooter parking permit if you haven't done that yet. Yes. Through parking. All right, and then um, with parking, one of the things, special things we did want to call out um, for those of you who've maybe been through a move-in with us before um, or have just been around Pomfret Hall, Adohi Hall, and Walton Hall. Typically, we would redirect parents to the Harmon Garage. Because of a street closure in the city, um, we are going to be unable or very, very difficult um, to get you to the Harmon Garage. So we have designated um, lots on the south end of campus for you to park in. So again, if you just check out movein.uark.edu um, or the UARC mobile app, that is going to direct you to the best parking places. And our staff, again, will be available with maps and all the help to get you to the right parking space if you're in one of those buildings. You talked about um, mopeds and scooters. Typically, the bike racks are not um, in a place that would be impeded by move-in. So um, I would recommend having a lock. You can also register your bike with uh, UAPD. Um, so that's a great service that you should check out. Um, and you can lock your bike up in one of the designated bike racks um, around the halls. There are several of those sure. um, near our halls. And Ken asks about uh, when do I get my physical resident reserve parking pass? And we've moved, obviously, to a new system. We have moved to a digital system. So um, your permit is now attached to your license plate. However, parking will be issuing a physical pass to most resident reserved um, pass holders, specifically to use on game weekends to allow you to come in and out of your resident reserved lot. Um, so you'll be able to pick that up from parking um, starting anytime next week during normal business hours, 8 to 5 at the parking office on campus. I didn't know that either. Thank you. you now I know. Yeah. All right. Um, and then just a couple more updates. Um, I, last I heard, our weather was going to be fairly rain free or rain light. So knock here's on hoping, concrete. I know, right? Here's hoping that continues. Um, however, if we do experience lightning here in Fayetteville, um, we will have weather delays to the move-in process. What that means is we will close lots and pull staff in um, and not do check-ins for a period of 30 minutes after that lightning 
um, is detected here in Fayetteville. So sometimes that's 30 minutes and that lightning rolls right on through and sometimes that's longer than 30 minutes if there's an additional lightning strike. So that is something to look at if you do see weather in the forecast for Fayetteville, just be checking the housing Instagram account for any weather updates and we will update there when those weather delays will end. Um, would highly recommend finding either a parking spot somewhere near campus or maybe that will be a nice convenient time to have an earlier late lunch while we're in a weather delay um, so that you don't come to a lot if we're closed at that moment. And obviously, if your time is during a weather delay, we adjust. Yes. We adjust for you. Yes. All right. And then um, you will be receiving a few updates via your UARC email the day before you move in. So it'll be some of this that we just covered and then any other updates or changes that happen live during the move-in process. Um, so every day we assess those needs and send out a fresh email at the end of the day with any reminders for the people who are moving in the following day. So um, tomorrow I will be sending all of you um, who are moving in Wednesday a nice email with any updates uh, and reminders for Wednesday um, and then everyone else will get them um, their appropriate day. We got to thank you. <laughs> glad to help glad to help yeah. are there any other questions about anything we've covered or just anything that you are curious about about your moving experience yeah um will those who have reserved dorm parking need to pick up a parking pass to use during the games we spoke about that and yes during the games you will need to have that physical pass unless you don't plan to leave the parking lot right okay. um, if you don't plan to leave at all on game days you could just leave it parked um, but I would recommend just in case something happens and you need to leave campus, I would recommend stopping by parking and getting that permit before the first home game. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? We'd love to um, answer anything we can about uh, move in to make it as smooth as possible for you. Uh, do you need a parking pass for Garland Garage? And typically no, because it's tied to your license plate. Correct. And if it's during the move-in time, then as long as you move out by the end of the day, you can use pretty much the top levels of Garland Garage. Yep, four, five, and six. Good question. Yeah. What are you most excited about when it comes to move-in, Megan? Me, Megan? You've done the, yes, you've done this a couple times. I just love seeing all the new families. Um, one of the really fun special things for me is I'm starting to um, see some of my uh, good childhood friends who have kids that are starting to come to school. And so I noticed uh, we had a friend who did an early drop off last week and I noticed the rooms, obviously I know the rooms quite well on the inside. And I was like, I recognize that room. So I'm excited to get to see them and welcome them on their moving day. Um, but then just getting to see the families have these really special moments. This is um, definitely a milestone experience for a lot of people. Um, so it's, it's fun to be a, an observer of, of that really important day. Yeah, yeah. It feels, it feels special to be able to watch parents and their, um, and their, uh, their kids, you know, come to the university and, and, and take in that experience. Had one more question about, um, about uh, parking garages. And uh, when it comes to garage permits, do they also need to pick up a physical pass for game days like those with resident reserved? I'd say I don't know I, the answer. I'm going to direct you to contact parking on that. I think if you have a reserved pass, um, you may still need that to come in and out of your garage space on on game days because they do have uh, parking staff at each garage to make sure that other people don't come into those garage spaces. And we also do have um, some tailgating spaces that are in garages. So I my guess would be that you also need some sort of physical pass, but um, to confirm that, I would highly recommend either calling parking or um, checking out the parking website. Yeah, we had a question from Ansley who asked about when she can use, when they can use the uh, Reserve Reserve parking Saturday, as soon as the last move-in happens, which is, what did you say, about 2.30, 3.30? Um, yeah, the last ones are arriving around 3.30, so I would recommend uh, maybe around the 4.30, 5 o'clock mm -hmm. yeah. time period is when you can move your car back in. Always, you can always check with the RAs um, of the building that you're living in to see. They'll know exactly what time or um, when they're going to be released to, to let people bring their cars back in. Will the elevator, let's ask, will the elevator be available to use in Clark? And yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't think of a reason why it wouldn't be. Right. No, no. Those are in, right. our, in, our, in our, our quad area. 
and they should be. I would say that when it comes to elevators, the question I get the most is, oh, I thought you had an elevator in palm frit. And what that is, is there's an elevator in palm frit uh, B, but there's not an elevator in palm frit C and D. So I will be sure you're aware of that. And like there is a palm, there is an elevator in Holcomb, but there's not an elevator in Futural. Right, right. Walton is kind of a weird elevator place. There is, there are two elevators in Walton, but quite frankly, it's difficult to use the elevators in Walton, depending on where in Walton you live um, within that little maze. You'll, if you live there, you'll know what I mean when you get there. Um, so if you're in Walton, I would plan to also be using stairs. Yeah. Um, another question about, can I park and keep my car in Garland Garage after I move in? I mean, yes, but there's some caveats there. Um, first off, do you have the Garland Garage parking permit? If so, uh, we're using the top levels of it and you need to be out by the end of the day, but you can, you can park there during the day. I would, again, if you have a specific question about your permit and where you can park, I would call parking during eight to five this week and ask them specifically about yeah. your pass. We uh, know a lot about parking, but I will not say we know everything. And uh, especially when it comes to resident reserve, we, you know, we, we work closely with them on that. Uh, when does our post office box become active? And I think that's the moment you move in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can find those details under, I believe, My Details yep. in the Campus Housing Portal. So you should be able to find all that information you need. And okay. rosters are live, so if you sent something right now, it would likely be in your mailbox when you write. When that you is write. true, that is true. Well, we've caught up with all of our questions for now. Um, I'm excited, are you excited? It's gonna be great. We're very, very excited for you all to get here. Yeah, okay. Well, you wanna, uh, you wanna sign us out? Yeah, I would say, um, if you are watching this live or you're maybe catching it up later, um, if you have any additional questions, don't uh, hesitate to reach out at housing at uark.edu or give us a call. Um, again, a lot of the information we're covering is on movein.uark.edu or in the UARC mobile app. Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.